Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Darreen. Joining this week are Ed Gamble, Maisie Adam and Aher Shah, Glenn Moore, Hugh Dance and Angela Barnes. This is the last episode of the current series. We'll be back in May, but it may be, who knows, the last time we do a show encased in perspex, we can only dream. <laughs> <laughs> it may be the last time that we get to stare into the homes of our viewers and we genuinely will miss our Zoom audience. Hello, Zoom audience, how are you? Yay! I know I've never said this before, but actually you see only 50 of the audience. There's another about 450 people on Zoom who are too ugly to show you. <laughs> <laughs> Stay under your bridge. <laughs> we start out with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ahar, which category would you like? Uh, may I have world news, please, Dara? An excellent start. Your topic is world news. The answer is 40 million. What is the question? Is it how many people did my mother want to invite to my sister's wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Last week's episode, how many tweets have I had asking, how's life in the dirt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it, um, since last week's episode, how many times have I watched the clip of Angela falling over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it, um, in Celsius, what body temperature did I fail to disclose to the producers this evening? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, um, is it how many times has Boris Johnson told to piss off in Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> It's a totally normal number of times to cry in 2020. Oh. <laughs> Is it how many times will Chris Whitty say, next slide, please, before <laughs> someone just buys him a clicky pointer? Yeah. <laughs> Is it, um, if, if the government have a rule of six, what rule does Rita Ora have? <laughs> <laughs> of Richard Osman's Thursday Night Murder Club did I get bought for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many years ago did the dinosaurs go, oh, something's coming? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is it how many metres do I legally have to stay away from Holly Willoughby? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many people landed at Heathrow Airport before someone said, hey, do any of you have coronavirus? <laughs> <laughs> We should check that. We should check that. How many shares did I mistakenly buy in the Judy Dench memorabilia company, Damestop? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many Melanias are lying in an unmarked grave? <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we move towards a correct answer, please? Is it how many additional vaccines have AstraZeneca promised to send the EU? Yes, that's absolutely right. Thank you very much. You. <laughs> yes. The question I was looking for is how many doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine will now be delivered to the European Union? This is the news that following a bitter dispute over a vaccine shortage, the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca has agreed to supply the EU with an additional 9 million doses by the end of March, taking its total to 40 million. However, this is well short of the 80 million doses that had originally been agreed. I've gone number blind. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many, though, now. There's so many. There's, like, AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer, and they all sound like um, cars from the 70s that my dad reminisces about. Like, <laughs> oh, our first day, I took your mum to Scarborough in the AstraZeneca. You were very impressed, weren't you, love? They all sound yeah. like... <laughs> Amazing, you're really not helping us. No, I <laughs> have been complaining that they don't have enough of the vaccine, but also saying that the vaccine doesn't really work. So we're in this odd situation where they're going to us, we'd like more of your vaccine. Which is shit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can't we just do it like Sainsbury's do it? Can't we say we're sending them the vaccine and then when it doesn't arrive, say, oh, sorry, we didn't have any in the end, so we've substituted it for a flu jab from 2015 and a strawberry yogurt? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should be slightly self-congratulatory, because it's basically... The, the problem is that we got our AstraZeneca vaccine and Europe didn't, and that credit to the government uh, for signing up to Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You certified, Britain certified first, uh, earlier than the Europeans, and then put the orders in first, earlier than the EU did. And so yeah. now the EU is in the unfortunate position of competing with Britain on queuing. Uh, and <laughs> there is... They are not... 
emotionally <laughs> bent for this. I mean, it, it I'm a little bit fed up of all the... I, I know, yeah, great, we've got a really good vaccine programme and everything, and the government, are, you know, deserve a bit of praise, I suppose, for getting it to the level they've got it at. But you have to remember that we wouldn't need such a good vaccine programme if they hadn't screwed up so badly in the first place. It's a bit like a cabbie taking you the quickest route to A&E after he's violently mugged you. Yeah, yeah. It is... It is an interesting result that, yes, the, the vaccine plan has been... It's been the third best rollout in the world, uh, the vaccine so far, combined with the worst death rate in the world. Yeah. So there is an element of, like, in the long run, we'll win the game, but in Britain, we'll win it 5-4. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> I do, to a certain extent, feel for the European Union because no-one enjoys watching their ex thrive. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately started like ex took extreme action. Do you know what the, the extreme action that they took was? They threatened to trigger Article 16. Yeah. Yes, Article 16. Oh, I know. No, I'm right. They threatened to trigger Article 16. Of our greatest fears <laughs> came almost came alive with that vote. <laughs> and what does Article 16 do? It's basically we're going to build a wall and Donegal's going to pay for it. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I want to ask one question, which is um, on that one, the one that's in the top corner. How have you? What what special filter have you got that makes you look like a 1970s Northern Irish paramilitary prisoner? Uh, in it. <laughs> this is the high price of British occupation uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, it was, I mean, it was fine in here because the EU then just did, like, an immediate U-turn, but that's totally, just yeah. how they drive over there. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, um, it was Macron, wasn't it, who basically sort of went, calm down, not in a liver puddle. Yeah, no. <laughs> if anything, that would, that would have escalated I, I things again. I shall appeal to them. I shall do one of their voices. <laughs> in France, they're not really... Because the vaccine uptake's not great in France. No, it's not. It? For a start, it's very difficult to vaccinate a French person because they're always shrugging. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, secondly, unless, unless, if you're a French man, unless you've got three active STIs, you're very much seen as a coward. <laughs> <laughs> Macron's, Macron's exact words were, and I hope I'm getting it right, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know, and then a big wind came yeah. out. Blew him away, <laughs> oh! Um, yes, uh, Macron decided to calm things down by basically saying that the vaccine was shit anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we don't, we don't even want a stupid vaccine, then, if you're going to be like that. Schoolboy <laughs> response, impossible. Who uh, didn't, didn't want, your, <laughs> want your vaccine anyway? Who <laughs> vaccine is terrible? <laughs> There's also one called, a uh, new one this week, called Valneva. Do you know what? I think they missed a trick. They missed a trick with the Valneva. They should have called it, because it's been made in Scotland. They should have called it Valneva Take Our Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many, um, how many doses of vaccine have been bought by the UK? 900 million. It's like 357 <laughs> million. There's like, I mean, there is a point that you have to keep reminding. You know there's only, like, about 65 million people here. You do seem to be very much the toilet roll hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> one in each arm and one up the butt, darling. The British, is, the British government is just heaving things off shelves. All of them, all of them. Like, at some point, it's going to find itself... They're going to be vaccinating us four times each, but, five but times. Huh? How many companies are there makers? There's Novavax as well, which is in Teesside. And I like Novavax because it's got the word vax at the end. And I like when medical companies put a little clue as to what it's about. <laughs> like when you get a diarrhoea medicine that's called, like, Bowel or Turtle. Assist. <laughs> <laughs> I like, no, the best one of those is Vagisil. Vagisil. Yeah. <laughs> like, Anusil means when the sun shines out of your arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the Russian one because I rely on the Russians to be able to put chemicals into a body and for it to work 100%. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, how have some troublemakers been breaking lockdown rules? Oh. So many ways. Oh, oh so hey. many ways. My favourite is the guy who said uh, he got fined for going to a brothel in a lockdown. And I was like, it, it's illegal anyway. <laughs> 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 We have, um, we have COVID marshals down on... Um, I live in Brighton and they're down on the seafront looking for people who aren't from the same household to, to tell off. And I, yep. um, they, were, they were going up to loads of 
like young couples going, are you two from the same household? And me and my boyfriend were walking along and I was genuinely quite offended they didn't ask us because I thought, <laughs> I thought we were still in that sort of early phase where we looked sort of, um, you know, exciting, but clearly we were giving off the vibe that we'd lived together, but we were very settled and had just had an argument about whose turn it was to unload the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Either that or even, even worse, Maisie, they could have looked at you and gone, brother and a sister. Oh! <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's all legal in debt. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Ed, Maisie and Aher. <laughs> now we play a round called Are You Ready For Your Immoculation? <laughs> <laughs> This game involves Glenn and Maisie, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News, and whoever chooses the stuff, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Our first topic, please. It's health. Who wants to come in on that? Maisie. Um, I'm going to share something about myself uh, that I've never said on this show before. It's a little bit personal. We're going to get a bit vulnerable. Um, you're looking very worried now on the Zoom crowd. Like, I'm going to be like, um, and finally, is this normal? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'm going to say that um, I am epileptic. Yep, mood dropped, didn't it? Mood, <laughs> mood, mood dropped to the floor, <laughs> as did I when I had my last seizure. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I got diagnosed at 14 years old, but the kind of seizures I was having at 14 weren't what you think of or what I think most people think of when they hear the word seizure. A lot of people hear that word and they think of sort of like flashing lights, convulsing on the floor, foaming at the mouth. That wasn't me, OK? The kind of seizures I was having at 14 looked like this. Ready? Disclosure, you can laugh. Ready? Once <laughs> <laughs> more for you there. <laughs> Question, how many 14-year-olds have you seen at the height of puberty occasionally go... <laughs> <laughs> so when I got diagnosed at 14, the doctors were like, oh, you've probably been epileptic since you were 10, just everyone thought you were rude, right? <laughs> with my dad, right? I remember having an argument with my dad before we all knew that I was epileptic and my dad was going to my mum, Jill, if she rolls her eyes at me one more time, I will send her to her room. <laughs> <laughs> and my mum, who was backing me, but she didn't know I was epileptic either, she was going, Philip, go easy on her, it's a difficult time for her, she's hormonal, it's puberty, right? Meanwhile, I was in the middle giving it proper Bran Stark, like, uh, actually, guys, um... <laughs> <laughs> I feel another one coming on. <laughs> Too many times of that happening for it to just be me being sassy. Uh, we went to go and get a diagnosis at Leeds General Infirmary and I was diagnosed by this neurologist and then also in the room was this nurse, Jan. And Jan was there in, like, a pastoral capacity to make sure I was OK about it. Um, but together, these two, they were like a sketch, right? He had, the doctor, he had, I kid you not, the worst wig I have ever seen in my entire <laughs> life, right? It was terrible. It was slipping down his head whilst he was diagnosing it. You imagine someone telling you you're epileptic and the entire time the hairpiece is slipping down. <laughs> so obviously my eye I was watching it, so my eye line was a little bit above his, and I remember him being like, Are you having one now, Macy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm watching your hair do a runner. <laughs> Jan, Jan was lovely. She was a proper Leeds lass, but she was lovely. And she said to me, she went, um, I know it's not ideal time, and is it, Maisie, being 14 and diagnosed with epilepsy? Uh, I said, um, no, not really, Jan. Uh, she went, uh, well, what were you being 14? You'll be wanting to start a family soon. <laughs> <laughs> At which point my mother had a seizure. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maisie Adams. That leaves us with Glenn. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And it's relationships. <laughs> I got dumped before the uh, first lockdown, and it was fine. It was fine. I got over it in the best way possible. Uh, took myself on holiday, spent a bit of time cruising down the west coast of America, uh, San Fran, uh, which is, of course, French for without Francesca. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's horrible. I got, done, I got done by email, and the worst thing was I was only CC'd into it, so it was just awful. I, um... <laughs> I, it, it's, it's her loss, really. She's now dating a guy who's got knuckle tattoos that say hate and uh, inbreeding. So I... <laughs> 
I think the, the issue was she was out of my league. I remember asking a friend of mine before I asked her out, I said, do you reckon she likes me? And he was like, does she like you? Does she fuck? I was like, OK, that's, that's going to be my next question. But, um, I, uh... <laughs> No, because she was out of my league, because, you know, she was charming, she was charismatic. I come across like I was breastfed until well into my teens. And she, she was... <laughs> she was sophisticated, you know? She was sophisticated. She was posh Scottish. Um, if you don't know what posh Scottish is, a uh, posh Scottish is when you slow down for every fancy word you know, uh, just to really show off about how many fancy words you know. Uh, it's something in the last few weeks that I have, uh, ascertained. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Someone who's out of your league, you start to panic. You sort of think, have I overstretched myself? Have I taken things too far? Have I shitten off more than I can poo? And so when she... <laughs> when she eventually dumped me, I started to think, well, why did she break up with me? Is it problems with me? Is it because I'm not assertive enough? I'm not, not, I'm not particularly assertive in bed. I realised in bed I'm about as assertive as I am with taxi drivers. It's very much a case of uh, just anywhere around here is great, thanks. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably the only person who's ever had to be reminded during sex that we're a shoes-off house. Uh, and, and so, um... <laughs> I didn't understand why we broke up, but I don't understand many things in life. I don't understand why people date. I don't understand why people break up. I don't understand what the meaning of life is. I don't understand why they decided to call it naked attraction and not who wants to see a willy on air. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Well done. Points there for Maisie. Close it down. Our next round is called <laughs> Picture of the Week. I show the panel topical image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So what's going on here? <laughs> is, this, is this the new Scottish delicacy of deep-fried water? <laughs> <laughs> she melted down the Lib Dems. <laughs> is, this, is this an image from the popular children's book, Where's Pineapple? <laughs> Is she saying, have you had enough of eating mess? Well, try some Scottish custard. <laughs> <laughs> I think she looks like the one nice dinner lady. You know, the one that'd be like, oh, you know you're not allowed seconds, you cheeky monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, I think it's a revenge attack. It's not actually custard. It's white sauce that Alex Salmond has pissed him. Uh, oh. Is this, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Is this satire? <laughs> Is she about to find out that you're supposed to keep the vaccine at minus 70 degrees? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I love the hot vaccine! It's hot vaccine! It's just nice to see what happened to the dad from Billy Elliot. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that's not, Maisie, that's, that's actually the Scottish 12 year old. <laughs> <laughs> He's she, queuing up for seconds. I'll tell you what, she is in red and she is exactly as Krista Burr imagined her. <laughs> 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 and you know what the correct answer is? Nicholas Sturgeon. Sturgeon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, all of you. You're yes, <laughs> absolutely right. Yes, it is, of course. <laughs> Yes, this is First Minister of Scotland, Nicholas Sturgeon. The Scottish National Party has signalled this week that Scotland could hold a second independence referendum by Christmas. The SNP said that the vote could be held six months after Holyrood passes a referendum bill in June. Are we excited for another independence yeah. referendum? No way! No way. It's, it's, I've, I've been waiting to get back to normal, how life was before the pandemic. I want to go to the pub, I want to hug my nan, and I want a divisive referendum that splits the country in two. Excellent. <laughs> It's the British way. It really is, yeah. Is it how many seconds late am I for this joke? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she coaxed Boris by saying that he was frightened of democracy. But um, maybe, maybe we should be frightened of democracy. Like, that's how we got Trump, it's how we got Brexit, yeah. how we got Honey G. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not particularly controversial to say that Boris is frightened of democracy, bearing in mind, in the last general election, he hid in a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason he's not doing that now is they're full of AstraZeneca. <laughs> <laughs> also, she, she quoted a Burns poem when she coaxed Boris. She quoted a Burns poem. She said, Cower in timorous beastie, what a panics in thy breastie, which literally means calm your tits. <laughs> 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 if, if Scotland leave, then Wales will leave, Northern Ireland will leave, and then it's like the sugar babes at that point. <laughs> <laughs> they, they'll all get together and then form their own band. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be a disaster. But also, it's going to change the Union Jack, so the real loser in all this is Jerry Halliwell. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Boris arrived in Scotland uh, bringing gifts from Kent. <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I hear your numbers are quite low. <laughs> Not anymore, he said, <laughs> as he popped a loogie into the face of whoever was standing beside him. Do you think in this, in this particular picture that Greg Wallace would be <laughs> appalled? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he always wears a hairnet, doesn't he? That is, that's a vaccine. And the thought of taking one of those Scottish viruses and finding one of Boris's hairs... Oh. In his... oh. <laughs> Stop! In other news, what setback has Donald Trump suffered ahead of his upcoming impeachment trial? Trump lost his entire legal team. Do you have any idea how morally reprehensible you have to be for lawyers to leave? Yeah! <laughs> 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 And he, he has now had to scrape the bottom of the moral barrel to get a new legal team. There's a lawyer who refused to prosecute Bill Cosby, mm -hmm. right? There's a lawyer who was going to defend Jeffrey Epstein, and presumably the rest of the legal team is just the hyenas from Lion King. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, even Robert Kardashian's hologram has turned him down. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, how have health officials in Beijing increased the accuracy of their COVID tests? They've started using anal swabs. They have. What, now, what, what it is, is so with the mouth swab, we, what, yeah. with the, so with the mouth one, what you do is you keep going till it hits your tonsils. With the anal one, you keep going till it hits your tonsils. Oh. <laughs> yes, by the way, sorry, let me just explain. Uh, we're, we're not going to leave this picture for long, but yes, it is oh. uh, an anal swab, and there is instructions to yeah. Look, you get you take, we can take the picture now. I think I think we've got the general gist of it there. I need to check something because we're tested every week to do this show. Are you telling me our tests weren't anal swabs? <laughs> <laughs> they weren't intended to be anal swabs. <laughs> <laughs> many, many medical issues raised, not least if COVID exists in that part of the body. Is it possible, therefore, to fart COVID at people? Because <laughs> that is not... Yeah. Oh. That has never turned up with any of them. Chris Witt has never oh mentioned that. Yeah. He's never... Uh, they have given you. advice. They have given advice. You're meant to fart into your elbow. <laughs> 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 But it's, it's a hoax, though, isn't it? I can't, I can't believe people are falling for the anal swab thing. I'm going to have to start breaking out my federal boob inspectors. <laughs> <laughs> like, on the instructions, what I like, my, on the instructions, it says that you have to, um, pardon me for this, but you have to insert it and then, then twist it twist several it, yeah. times. And I'm like, it's like you're being wound oh. up. I thought if they do that to me, I'm going to, as soon as the nurse stops, I'd just start going. <laughs> <laughs> Would you not be tempted to do the Dick Van Dyke dance oh, yeah. or Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Yeah. <laughs> no, I quite like the idea that they just swirl it around in a, in a move they call Randy Floss. Oh. <laughs> I just keep imagining them doing, doing them at one of those drive through centres. Where <laughs> <laughs> they have to park up and take their belt off and then just... <laughs> Against the window, just <laughs> <Yeah>. move it. <laughs> the huge disappointment is, and, and that's one of the reasons I wanted the picture taken down, is that it turns out my tattoo means anal swab. At the end of that round, the points go to Ed, Maisie and Aher. <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area. I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is things you wouldn't hear in a history documentary. Well, <clears throat> I'm afraid due to CGI budget constraints, this series of Walking with Dinosaurs is just this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it if you cut Angela's and just left that in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Professor Robert Winston, and you join me at the Royal Albert Hall in the search for a legendary artefact. This is Hitler's other ball. <laughs> Henry, the Secretary of State during the Nixon administration, sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G E R. <laughs> <laughs> And in ancient Greece, they used to put a coin in dead bodies' mouths, so when they got to the afterlife, they could get a trolley. <laughs> <laughs> now, unfortunately, we don't know anything about this period of history because someone pulled down one statue of a racist. <laughs> <laughs> It's February and my boyfriend won't let me put the heating on. This is the real Cold War. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
And I'm delighted to be the first museum animatronic of a blacksmith to host a history documentary. <laughs> 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 and this inhabitant of Pompeii used his final seconds to hold up a sign that says, all TV historians are dicks. Right, which one of the camera crew did this? <laughs> <laughs> Before his victory in 1066, he was known as William the. <laughs> <laughs> the Bronze Age, the third best age. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we all know, the Battle of Hastings occurred in 1066. Oh my God, that's my pin number. <gasps> Shit, is this live? <laughs> This has been described as dinosaur poo, and that's one of the best reviews of this history programme. <laughs> <laughs> divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. We've all got our own way of remembering the sugar babes. <laughs> After treating the body and wrapping it in bandage, they travel home and pretend they've had nothing done in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> now, the ancient Egyptians believed that the sun crossed the sky in a golden chariot. <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another documentary about the Nazis. How have you not made your mind up? <laughs> <laughs> the Black Plague was actually ended by the Great Fire of London, so you join me setting fire to a 5G mast. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... <laughs> unlikely things to hear on the radio. You're listening to Radio 3. Well done. <laughs> I quite like AstraZeneca. It drives really well. You're listening to Motoring Today on <laughs> Dip FM. <laughs> and now a documentary in which we look at the outmoded sexual mores of the carry-on films. This is Radio 4. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's chilled out, relaxing songs to send you off to sleep here on Drive Time. <laughs> You're listening to Jazz FM. It's about the listeners we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> You're tuned in to the number one most listened to radio station in the UK right now today. It is Hospital Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Week's number two. Gotta feel three stone lighter. <laughs> <laughs> and this week, still at number ten. He, he's still at number ten. <laughs> 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 and in about 15 seconds' time, we'll be coming towards the end of the minute silence. <laughs> <laughs> As we approach the summer months, my advice is just to shave it all off. You're listening to Lady Gardener's Question Time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 0800, it's going to be underneath your neighbour's wheelie bin. This is the Hermes shipping forecast. <laughs> <laughs> And now, Gavin Williamson tells us how to run a major government department in... I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, a lot of angry callers today. And let me say, if you want to talk about the Premier League, there is a place for you to go. But if you want to chat about your love of fortified wine, join us here on Talks Port. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Today's call-in topic is what do you do when your phone is broken? Uh, no one's got in touch so far, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> and for the next two hours on LBC, it's white noise. Nick Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> now people say the days of pirate radio and rock and roll are over, but I'm here to bring them back. I've had two lem sips. Here's scouting for girls. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here are the news headlines. Nothing's happened yet. It's four in the morning. Go back to bed. <laughs> Today's phone-in is about anxiety at work. Do you ever feel that when you're doing your job, there's five people waiting behind you ready to take your seat? At the end of that round, the boys going to Ed, Maisie and Aher. the end of the show. This week's winners are Ahir Shah, Maisie Adam and Ed Gamble. <laughs> Commiserations to Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis and Glenn Moore. <laughs> Thank you for watching all through this most unusual series of Mock the Week. That's it for now, but we'll be back in May. We'll see you then. I'm Darbreen. Good night. <laughs> Comic Liam Williams challenges himself to be the next megastar vlogger. Press red to watch BBC Three's Please Like on iPlayer Now.